So I was on a walk yesterday and um, I saw this squirrel just running up a tree and there was no other squirrels around. It didn't need anybody. It was just doing its own thing, finding its nut, burying its nut. And when you analyze it, it's just a content squirrel, just happy by himself, doing Mm. what he needs to do. And you look at humans, we're unhappy. We need everyone and we're not content by ourselves. You always have to go out with people and then people end up making us wishing we hadn't gone out because their energy puts our energy down if they're a negative person and it's like we're just that squirrel we don't need to be with people all the time it's okay to go for a walk by ourselves without needing people all the time and we've just lost touch with ourselves which is basically what everything in nature is just existing in its own shell and if there's other people around or animals around co-inhabiting with it fantastic you'll share food you might have an argument you might follow them to a stream but (laughs) end of the day we are by ourselves and yet humans have forgotten that that we can be content without anyone. Absolutely. It starts and ends with us. And that's something I teach a lot to my clients is they're so worried about grabbing on to them and they don't realize how much they're projecting out or how much they're being projected upon. And they get caught in this whirlpool of being addicted to that kind of energy because they think at some point they're going to get fed by it, but they're just hungry all the time. And so I have to sit them down and go, no, it's it starts and ends with you. You have to be content alone and to develop your own invisible language in that space and know that you are the one who gets to reparent yourself and you are the one who gets to take care of yourself. And as soon as you can do that, then we can start to let other people in and find out what kind of dynamic we like. I mean, that's been such a journey for me as well. I used to be highly introverted or extroverted, excuse me. And then I became super introverted once I started going through more of my spiritual awakening. And now I'm kind of coming out the other side and realizing that I'm co-creator, right? And I get to kind of set the boundaries and take care of my energy and my space and then go into a social interaction and kind of be with it in a whole new way. Yeah, what's amazing is that when you um, say look on Google Maps or Apple Maps, you keep zooming out and you can see the earth and you keep going out and it's just like this small dot. And you think just the drive (laughs) to say the opposite end of L.A. from where you are takes ages, let alone going to Australia. And then you zoom out and you realize this is just one rock out of thousands, probably millions. (laughs) And you keep zooming out and it's like we're just a floating bit of dust in the air. Yeah. And the what the Earth's just a floating bit of dust, and then you think all this shit on on humans have is it doesn't mean shit. It's in our heads. It's like everything is in our heads and how we see it because the grand scheme of things, we're just a bit of bacteria, and it's like yeah. wow, these problems don't really mean anything, and they're what we've created by ourselves, and they they're not actually problems. They're like they're just neurons firing up that you don't want in your head because of you know. It's, so when you look at it like that, it makes every minute like everything because it is just minute all problems are in our heads and um when you zoom out you see oh everyone else has got problems as well mine isn't actually that bad Mm. and then you start to feel like you're you're you um you're lucky that yours isn't that bad rather than i've got a problem so i'm gonna make your problem worse so we now feel the same about our problems um that negative toxic cycle Oh, yeah. It's like it almost becomes a competition sometimes. And everyone's walking around with this all this looping mental energy. And I'm like, if if you just can bring that down into your body, you start to gain a perspective immediately on just how much you're holding up here and you're letting it loop and you're letting your thoughts run wild. And I love that image of of scaling out with, you know, the planet and seeing the solar system and the Milky Way. And then you go, I, I remember the first time I saw that to scale and I was baffled because it went out like 15 times. And I I think I saw it when I was like 20 years old, which is way too late to be seeing that. But it just astounded me. I couldn't believe how far it went out. And I immediately felt just what you said, like my problems are pointless. And at the same time, it made me feel very, very, and this could be an ego thing too, but it made me feel very, very special in a way. Like if if we're all still here amidst all of that debris and that dust and we're just a speck, then something feels very significant. So I've talked to a lot of people who have like, oh, that makes me feel like, you know, what's the point? And I'm like, no, I that makes me feel special. Like if we're still here, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So you like when you think that earth was perfectly positioned from the sun so it's not too hot and not too cold enough to get moisture to grow blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. and all the planets that are too far away too cold too close too hot that it burns we think wow 
it's not what is the point like we're going to die with bacteria like what's the point like you should feel lucky that you are aware of your existence and that because yeah. you are aware you can now live the most amazing life knowing that you're going to die any minute you could die any minute that's how people should look at it because i used to think what's the point i'm spiritually awoken i know the system's fucked that everyone's <laughs> got problems everyone's getting disease like what is the point and then it's like no because there would be no point now you're here you have to like make the most of it and if all you are aware is how you feel right now and that's all you can change why do you feel like shit or you know i feel good do it again then you might as well just take make the most of that it's almost like being on holiday and then realizing you're going home very soon so you're really just looking at the beach one more time you're in the hotel looking at the window you're saying goodbye to your friends you're hanging around the pool you're looking at your watch and it's like five minutes and it's 10 minutes you're really making the most of that moment until you realize that life is you that's it's that for like say 80 years and then you're not yeah. going home in five minutes um but yeah it's all to do with how you how you see it and um it is a blessing that we are able to control our existence Absolutely. out of like anything in the whole universe probably animals cannot to the same extent unless there's other intelligent species like us on another planet which there probably isn't unless it's some different system based on not having the sun or whatever we are extremely lucky out of billions of bacteria we like the only one that really has control over everything really <laughs> yeah no yeah, no I like to look at it as like a fun ride that I signed up for and that I've probably signed up for over and over I wanted to ask you was there you you know you had mentioned feeling like things were pointless at one time and I felt that way at one point as well um, I was very depressed in my early 20s and that was pretty much how I felt around the clock but was there any sort of book that you read or concept that you heard that pulled you into the space that you're in now I'm so curious um, so I've always been a like obsessive, obsessive analytical thinker, analyzing everything to the nth degree, every why until there wasn't a why, um, going down every path, understanding everything. I wanted to have answers because I didn't have answers. And then um, I essentially had a breakdown from excessive thinking and um, I got to the end of working everything out where there was no more thoughts to work out because I'd, I'd pretty much answered all my questions. So now it was just meditation, peace, no no thoughts, no no brain activity, just silence, awareness. And I started to notice like seven doves on someone's house and the dandelion or the neighbor didn't cut the grass as neatly as they should have. And then the, the squirrel on the tree and everything became aware because I went from in my being in my head my whole life to you being outside for the first time with no mm. thoughts. I saw people that I used to go to school with. I saw she dropped her purse. I'd say you dropped your purse. Mm. She was in her head. And it was like, holy shit. It's like, I've been deaf my whole life and I can hear. And it was fucking <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I had a very, very similar moment. You pulled me completely back to mine. And I had been, I had been struggling with depression for years and years at this point, but I had started to do the work. And it started with that phrase I said a little bit ago, I think is someone had given me a book that told me like, you are co-creator, you, you have a role in this and you get to decide and you get to notice and work with everything. And was I don't know. Secret? It wasn't actually, no, it was, um, they gave me a book of, oh, it was this actually. So it was these sacred path cards. So they're cards that I use with my clients now and they're rooted more in native American teachings and spirituality. It's very beautiful. But the book that came with it said that you are co-creator. You are responsible for all of your joy and all of your pain. And that was really the first thing that started to bring me out of the deep well that I had been living in. And my moment came, I think, a year after that point. I was in San Francisco studying and I was walking down the street and I just had that same moment of like, oh my God, that tree and like the leaves over there. And there's a man riding by on his bike. And it's like feeling like it looks extraordinary for some reason. Like my eyes popped open. And my favorite thing about that too is like once consciousness touches you, it never leaves, right? It's not something you can just be like, I don't think I care for this. I'm going to set this down. Because I had a friend ask me yesterday, he was like, what if I stop being interested in this? And I was like, there's no way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> once once it gets you like you're in for life <laughs> that's why we're and here and it's like I, I most people they spend their life in their head thinking like thinking right. what they should have done in the past and the future like when you think about how many people aren't concentrating or are not focused they are literally missing out of what's in front of them like you cannot yeah. I've walked past people in the shopping center and I've looked at 
them, but because they're in their head, back of their retina, they're not outside the retina looking at me. So they can look at me, but their brain mm. hasn't acknowledged that it's me and we know each other because they're in their head with some other friend, some other place. So yeah. it's crazy. You cannot be outside and aware when you're in your head. And I almost had a car crash because I was talking to the voice in my head and I Ooh, almost yeah. died, near death experience. And from that day onwards is when it all, everything I became out of my head basically because I was literally becoming schizophrenic slash possessed with the demon like just that eternal voice was taking over as opposed sure. to being aware and um then all of a sudden it i just i became out of my head and um out on so much and the the the, the solution is simply meditation that yeah. is the only that's the only thing they need to do and people Absolutely. are like oh it doesn't work it's like you doesn't just happen in five minutes it takes like three four weeks probably more like going to the gym would building a muscle you gotta oh yeah weight lift weights for a long time um you can't just um you know you can't just suddenly do it yeah yeah and it's it's tough because we've been taught you know in our culture at least and I'm sure it's in yours too I think this is a universal thing but we, mostly but we just we want immediate tangible results and when we don't get them we get frustrated and we start looking for the easy way out and I see that all the time. I'm obviously recommending to all my clients, you need to be meditating. You need to be, I don't care if it's just five minutes a day, like you need to start meditating. Oh, I tried it once. It doesn't work for me. I'm like, do you have any idea how many types of meditation there are? First of all, it took me like to get through, I think I tried five or six different types of meditation before I landed on the one that worked with my brain at the time. So I had been I was diagnosed at 19, like severely ADD and put on medication for it. You know how that goes. And, um, and I started meditating in my brain because I had been fed that narrative that I was, that I had that disorder. I was like, Oh, I can't concentrate. I can't do this. There's no way. But I knew that there had to be a way. So I kept looking, thank God. But that's, that's what I run into. Everyone's like, Oh, I can't get my brain to quiet down in order to do this. And I'm like, it's a muscle. You have to work it, but also let's explore the different types of meditation and find the one that works for you. Like, let's not just set this down because you tried it once and you felt like it was a failure. So it's just, it's pushing through that too. Like it's everyone wants something that works immediately. They want a quick fix. And when it comes to your brain, you've been running through the same patterns for how many years? It's like you, you know, you have to get on this train and, and want to not get off <laughs> because the brain, it takes time. It takes so much time to start working with and get out of there. So based on what you said, you'll find this interesting. I was diagnosed with Tourette's when I was 12 years old on medication till I was 21, came oh, off wow. the medication and three weeks of meditation, the Tourette's disappeared. So I oh, worked out what Tourette's okay. was. It was excessive brain activity, stimulating face muscles through frustration and needing other muscles to help the brain process the power. And then mm. the swearing is the frustration of trying to work out, is there a chicken or the egg? How can God be in the sky? Is there shops? What does he have for dinner? Fuck, cunt shit. What the fuck does he do? And so yeah. in my head, the, the tablets would slow my brain down so there's less twitching, so the tablets work. But my thoughts were still there. And so 10 years later, I learned, got the secret book and whatever. And I just came off my medication literally overnight. Everyone said, you got to come off it slowly. I just stopped taking it overnight. And then three weeks later of literally, I remember just all day, every day, lying in my bed. Every time a thought came in, I went, Bleh! then another one. Bleh! I wouldn't <laughs> process it. Bleh! Just like, don't process it. Because you think, if I just process this one thought, I won't do the next one. Like, one more cigarette, then I won't. Then I'll stop. Right. One yep. more crisp, then you feel like, oh, fucking pot of Doritos, yeah? So it was just like, Bleh! And it just kept coming. And I remember getting so angry with myself. I was like, for fuck's sake, shut up. And it just <laughs> wouldn't go. But then, like, when you go to the gym, you don't get the muscles that day. It's often two days later that you see difference. So then after I slept, there was less and less and less and less and less brain activity mm -hmm. yeah. through not processing that thought, which you think, I'm just going to think about this and it will be the last one. It doesn't end. The only way it ends is if you don't think about them. And then you don't yeah. think. So reading the shower bottle when I was like taking a shit, reading the instructions on the back for the first time I'd seen like what the label was. Mm. But really, that was about taking my brain away from my own thoughts and focusing on something outside to the point where I was like, what was I thinking about? Yeah. Never mind. And then <laughs> another one comes in and then you read something else, distract your brain. And it was what was I thinking about? And then you realize all this is just a waste of time. It doesn't have any relevance. It's just nonsense. It's just like an extra spam email in the inbox that you've got to go through it's like don't delete it just unsubscribe for good and it doesn't come back and that's i literally perfect. unsubscribe to thousands of emails 
that I was getting from companies until I had none. And I have none to this day, no post, which is the mm. same as my thoughts. It was about taking control over things coming into my life, thoughts, emails, text messages, Facebook requests. Who, who the fuck is this person I'm friends with? Delete, 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 remove. And I basically just ended up with just my bed and myself, no phone, no TV, no laptop, me in my bed. And I started from scratch, literally. What did Jesus have? He had nothing. And I got mm. to that level and I built. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That's co-creation. That's like the bath candles in the dark and no bubble bath and shit like that. Yeah. That's <laughs> no, that's, that's great. And I, that example and that journey is so perfect because I am kind of always, you know, you've got the people who really subscribe to the idea that we are incredibly powerful and we can do anything, um, which as you just showed is true because what you went through and what you moved through and kind of reworked is really significant and not something that we're taught that we can do. And so you've got like a group of people who believe that and then a group of people who are very adamant, like once you have a diagnosis and you have to listen to the doctor and I just wonder how many people out there have been diagnosed, you know, schizophrenic or bipolar or have some disorder, not because they are stuck with that for life, but because something happened along the way and somebody suggested that to them. And then they told them that same thing over and over and the way our brains work and our energy works. I mean, if we're told the same thing over and over, that will become reality, right? That's how that works. That's energy. So it's like, how many, you know, for me, it's like I'm diagnosed ADD, I'm diagnosed with manic depression and anxiety. And do I have any of those issues now? No, because I sat down and I was like, I don't, this is, this is not how I'm going to live my life. I don't want this anymore. And I co-created my way out of that, you know? So I just, I'm so interested in how many people are out there struggling with something and being told that something's wrong with them. When in reality, they just need to be told, Hey, like you have all the power in the world to transcend this and move through it. Let's work on that instead, instead of just shoving medication down their throats over and over. Yeah, like medic, medic, medication tricks your body into believing that it's in the state which it should be in without mm -hmm. the meditation, medication. But then the medication keeps your body and mind in that state forever because right. you don't think you've got it anymore. So when you come off it in 10 years' time for, say, depression, antidepressants, whatever, all that anxiety times 10 is now hitting you so the first right. 10 years go straight back on it yeah. so it's the it's the medication which is the problem in the first place yeah i cured 10 years incurable worth of tourette's in three weeks by medication versus med so with meditation whereas <laughs> medication was the reason why i had it in the first place and uh, they had the doctors and the crisis team the psych psychiatric team come around to try and assess me and they kept asking me to tell my past so they could say, hmm, based on your past, you've got ADHD, yeah. OCD, Tourette's, um, fucking Asperger's, ADHD, autism, whatever. And I, right. I didn't say anything in the past. I said, find what is wrong with me right now, right this moment. I'd say I'd cancer when I was two, leukemia when I was three. Does that mean I've got it now? No. So that's what you're trying to say. If I had something then, I've got it now. So they yeah. tried to go into the past to get, oh, definitely OCD Asperger's okay so you say you've these these are the traits of Asperger's meaning you've got it now because it's all one and therefore the, the solution to Asperger's is these tablets and whatever and I stood still and every time they asked something in the past I basically said that's in the past we are at present <laughs> and eventually they got so bored and annoyed and frustrated he looked at his colleague and said yeah definitely Asperger's you know trying to play the system whatever and I shook his hand and he, and he left and and that's the whole point of the system, that when you are lost, you are looking for guidance and you follow the authorities because you believe that they are superior to you. Follow the doctor. The doctor's always right. And the doctor's following a university professor who learned something 50 years ago that he was taught from a professor fucking millions of years ago. And whilst he's teaching, science is changing in China, yet to come over to America. And it's just like everything's just bollocks, basically. People just want a quick escape. And not and quick escape is just like a tablet. And the answer is just going into yourself, meditation, shutting yourself away from humans because they're the problems, like interfering with your life. And um, <laughs> that is literally the solution because that is the problem. Oh, absolutely. Trying to get outside when it's already in you. Yeah. Yeah, this like never ending preoccupation with the past and the future. It's like everywhere I turn, that's all anyone is ever worried about. And it's like, 
even <laughs> I just don't understand like the the infinite nowness that that is here, you know. And my family even or like some friends will be like, "Why aren't you worried about this? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't?" I'm like, "Because it doesn't matter. It's not here. It does not matter. I can take actions right now that will set me up for success in the future, but I'm not going to worry about it because I know that everything is as it should be. And whenever it arrives, I'll be ready for it. That's all I need to think about and know, and I can just drop it. But you know, it's just, it's tough. And it's especially tough when you've got people you're close to who are really preoccupied with that space and you have to kind of do what you can. Hopefully you can bring them in. And then at a certain point, you just have to drop it and let them do what they're going to do. But it does make me wonder like what kind of a world we'd been living in if it was mandatory for all of us to take classes in meditation starting at six years old. I mean, it's like, you know, you start to wonder if they keep it from us for a reason. <laughs> I'm sure they do because they like to have control, whoever they are, the man in charge. But it's it's tough. Yeah. I mean, I guess only my only hope now is that I can just give this these gifts to as many people as possible and hopefully they'll get other people on board and that ripple effect will be strong. But you know. It's like when when I realized that I couldn't change the world and tell everyone this information, you realize you can only tell your immediate people around you say you know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree however far the apple falls as far as you can tell basically and mm -hmm. then they can tell somebody f you know the same distance from your tree to the acorn so you can't do anything but tell like your say immediate five people because if you are friends with them you probably think the same as them so you can only tell them anyway because everyone else won't have any kind of clue about right. awareness and consciousness so you can really only tell those people are next to you and then they can only tell people are next to them and as it goes out the energy gets weaker like you know you go from earth to space to galaxy whatever but it's the opposite people get weaker more dependent more disease and so you realize well if i can't even tell a friend of a friend how the fuck am i supposed to heal the whole world and then you realize that's where we've come from in the first place small local tribes local villages mm, you've got the chimpanzees yeah. over here the cows over here the sheep over here the ants over here they have no clue about other ants and sheep over there on that tree they are here and then it's like humanity seems like this whole world thing but animals and nature is like no we're just here and here <laughs> that doesn't exist so then you realize you can't change humanity you can only change your five friends around you which is the same as the five sheep in the field or the other squirrel on the other tree i mean the other squirrel on the other tree down the road is not relevant because the chances are you'll never go that squirrel's not going to walk there because it's too far he might not be able to find his way back and he's got enough food and water here so he's not going to know about that squirrel let alone the squirrel in africa or the squirrel in australia mm. and then then you think wow humans aren't supposed to be helping other humans we're not supposed to be leading evolution from like each different jungle happens in their unique time frame yet humans are trying to make every human evolve to the same level of awareness that every human will ever get to like all in one go it's like this is the ultimate go from caveman to human oh there's an african who doesn't have a tap we'll make him a tap we'll build him a house we'll take him to school it's like that shit took years you can't just take <laughs> every human and teach them like the, make him into a god i mean yeah. and every, the whole world's trying to catch up and it's like don't leave me out and it's oh dear <laughs> yeah no i i <laughs> It's a good perspective for me to hear, too, because as as a coach, I mean, you mentioned at the beginning of our talk together that that market is very, very saturated and it's becoming like the thing. Like there are so many coaches now doing and most of them want to coach other coaches, which I find very, very interesting. And I will sometimes get into this mode where I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, I you know, I only have this many followers if I can kind of like accidentally get into that brain where I'm thinking and caring about that and. I want to help more people. I want to help more people. And then it always lightens in my chest when I remember that I've got some of the same, let's say 10 to 15 people popping into my inbox over and over asking me questions. And as soon as I redirect and go, oh my gosh, no, I've got, I've got a small community right here of people who are actively engaging with the work and wanting to become more conscious and more aware. And that's all I want for anyone anyway. So it's, more helpful for me to redirect my attention and make sure that they're getting what they need because I know that if they're getting what they need, they're going to tell their community and then some, right? And then it can create like that ripple effect that extends outwards even more. But it's, I think sometimes I get a little too big for my britches. I'll say like, I'll, I'll get very concerned with wanting to be someone who has like a hundred thousand followers, right? Not because I want all of them looking at me, but just because I'm so hungry for all of them to have information. But maybe that's not 
what I'm meant to do. And I like the perspective that you had. It's like, all I can do is help who's immediately around me. And I also have to trust that whoever's meant to find me will. I mean, we found each other, which I think is very, very cool. Like Instagram has been amazing for me meeting people who are conscious <laughs> and, you know, and outside of my community growing up, like I wouldn't have otherwise met any of those people. But I do think that we're magnetically attracted to each other, which is a very, very cool thing. Yeah, Instagram is literally saying this person is also spiritually woken like you and that other person. And it's like fucking they're all there. And all I do is like, you know, suggestions. That person's awoke. We're going to have a great conversation. Instagram is literally doing it all for us. And um, I recently gave up on the Instagram side. I realized that even if you have, say, a million followers based on the algorithm, a small percentage only see your post because if they're following, say, 2,000 people, Instagram's yeah. only going to show, say, the top five accounts that you interact with and watch anyway. So mm -hmm. followers don't mean shit. Those five <laughs> people that keep messaging you that pay you £10 a week, which is £50 a week, which is whatever a month, whatever, that is real. Um, anyone who has the followers, they might have the followers, but in terms of the engagement and who sees the post, it is minimal, absolutely mm. minimal. And I went through this summer of sticking to an Instagram system, D DMA every single body who followed me, right? I went through a, a complete system and it, it got stuck. It didn't go further than X amount. And that's because of the amount of people that actually see it versus the amount of followers. It, it The maths doesn't add up. Um, for example, I'm thinking yeah, I want 5,000 people to listen to the podcast, 300 people regularly listen to the podcast, okay, which is, I'm thinking that's actually great because it's regular people, rather than me thinking oh, I want 5,000, mm, it's like yeah. no, 300 is a lot because if they all stood in the room, you wouldn't even take a whole day to say hello to them, right, oh, because yeah. you can't see them, you get greedy, it's almost like you think there's a better looking man out there, so you think well, I'll, I'll just go out to clubs and I might find them, you get greedy, it's like well this person's good looking enough. So you think, OK, I want more followers. And you realize you can only do X amount of coaching calls in a day. Right. So oh, yeah. X amount, so like seven hours, 10 pound an hour, 70 quid. You can only really say, um, so I don't know, two grand a month or whatever. Why do you need 5000 people? It's like it's in our heads of more when yeah. little, little little is little often is little and often wins, like slow in the hair, the the um hair and the rabbit, whatever. The slow always wins. Yeah. Um, Again, it goes down to local tribes versus big governments. The small yeah. wins. So yeah. followers mean absolutely shit. And I, <laughs> yeah. I don't care about that anymore. I'm not even doing Instagram. I'm just doing podcasts, enjoying a chat and putting it out there rather than doing it for the purpose of monetization because then yeah. your mindset's different. Now you're thinking about, oh, I need to release an episode. I need to do that. Oh, fuck me. I've got to find somebody. So I've got to rush through a podcast. But it's like, it's that's not what it's about. It's about being present, enjoying my time with another person. And if someone else can benefit, fantastic. And then because you change that mindset, that's when it normally does rock it because when you stop focusing on it, what you want comes and all that shit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I have to have very, very strict like chats with the this the piece of myself that wants more and thinks that it needs to play a game, you know, and that's and that's tough because I, you know, I've got like as a spiritual person, it's I am constantly trying the world tries to drag me into playing this game, especially as an entrepreneur, right? And I need to I need to make ends meet. Like that's certainly part of it. I have to play the game in some capacity, but there is a lot of the game that I just end up at the end of the day. I'm like, you don't need to be like, stop, stop worrying about this. Stop playing this. Like, you don't have to do all that. Like, you know, as well as I do, like you just said, like, as soon as you release your grip is when everything falls onto your plate. I mean, it's just amazing. Like when we can move ourselves back into that state of um, I'm allowed to expect good things. And if my intentions are clear and the alignment is there and I'm living now and I'm living purposefully, it's, it all just like kind of comes in around you. It's very, very beautiful. And I feel like I was able to lock into that before I even knew I was doing it. Cause I used to be in sales and I always found that as soon as I stopped concentrating on the number or the goal I was supposed to hit, uh, is when it all happened. And it was just like, and then I was like, past my goal you know and it's the same thing with uh with manifestation it's like as soon as you stop worrying so hard that you're going to get it and stop trying to play this game that everyone else is telling you you have to play is when you suddenly realize how unbelievably satisfied you are and everything you need is right there but teaching that concept 
has, even though it feels so simple, has been the hardest among all the things I feel like I teach. Even amidst all the stuff, you know, the consciousness and I'm teaching them psychotherapy techniques, even after all that, it's like just the simple idea that like you, <laughs> you can have whatever you want and you just need to let go to have it. People are like, I have no idea what that means and how do I do it? Um, so I'm always searching for new ways to explain that to people of like what it truly means to let go. And it's amazing how people just find that to be the most difficult concept there is, how to let go. It's like saying somebody don't, wor don't worry about making money when they're in debt. All they can focus yeah. on is the debt. So right. again, it all comes down to that when people want something, they focus on it more. When they can't get it, they focus on it more. And I call that um, like having a magnet at school you've got like a north and south magnet just two mm. north magnets when you go close enough to the north magnet it just pushes away and mm. no matter how much you go against it you push it even harder and it shoots across even more and you creep up and it still pushes away and you fucking push it and it fucks off it doesn't happen and if you give that as an example or even demonstrate that magnet situation show them that you are this magnet when you're focusing on something that you really want this is what you're doing and you'll see the two north magnets just doing that and you see if you push it more it goes further people learn through visualization more than they do anything else we have this thing about kinesthetic which is reading and auditory which is listening and visual which is whatever kinesthetic is man-made no fucking person learns from words written by somebody else that's not how it works we learn through trial and error what we see what we hear touch taste whatever so showing people has them understand it and then they translate it in their own way rather than you or me or a book trying to explain their way of how they understood the same thing. So they can see that magnet and get it in, a, in, in just like that. Whereas you could try and explain it in so many languages, they still won't get it because they have to translate it in their own way. And I know this from my own experience. My dad and everyone at school <clears throat> used to try and teach me shit, wasted your time. They could have explained the same thing over and over again. I still wouldn't get it. I have to ask you the questions as I'm working it out. So... Mm. What do you mean by that? Okay, and this one, and I got to put the steps together in my head. So it's almost like heartbeat. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. I'm putting it out. You're confirming if I've got it right. I'm putting it out. You're confirming. And then I put together that thing. Like um, there's this board game, blackjack or whatever. It's just like whatever. Um, Yeah, and you can try and tell people, but they still have to work it out themselves. It's like people are going to get there eventually, whether people help them or not. The only difference is, is that one person, they can end up spending hundreds of pounds towards because they are, they're there in that moment. So they could get that information once and five months passes and they still get there. They could be here and spend thousands on a coach, thousands on a mentor package and still get there. Mm. We are part of that journey of them getting there, but it's how much time and money that they focus at that time, which is the, how the other person benefits. That's why I feel guilty because when I know all this stuff and I've got to pay bills and I'm a good salesman and you know they're going to spend more, it's like, well, this is just life. But then you realize, well, they're a human in pain and you are in pain and you start to understand them and then you're back in your position of no money. And so yeah. it is a, it's a tricky situation when you're balancing humanitarian ph philanthropy versus I've got fucking bills to pay and I live in a shed. You know, it's like, when do I draw the, when do I draw the line? And, um, and that, that's when you just let go of everything, serve without expecting money, and mm. people will reward you with money because that's how people reward you. They're not going to give you saucepans or a pillow. They're going to give you £10, and then that adds up, and then that's when, okay, when you let go, it all comes, as you said, with the sell shit, because now you're, again, we're not doing it based on any hit targets. You're literally that magnet pushing the magnet on the table. When you don't give a fuck about your boss and his targets, the magnet flips to the south because you're doing the opposite and it attracts right. immediately. So you yeah. should understand that's an analogy. Yeah, no, I love that. That's perfect. And it works. I, uh, it's, I just, I, that's, I think the money thing is the hardest time I've had since starting my business is like, how much do I charge? And I want to make it accessible. And to ha to be in this position of having this kind of information to give, which I feel is vitally, obviously important. It's changed my life. I want it to change everyone else's. And I believe we're here to become conscious. Um, but I hired a business mentor at one point 
um, who is like helpful in some ways, but in other ways, she's like, you're not charging enough. You're not charging enough. You should charge, you know, $1,200 for the course that you teach. And I'm like, then who's the people that need to be taking it won't be able to afford to take it. And I know that I need to put food on the table as well, but like what I'm currently charging is reasonable, I believe for me and for them. So like, you know, I, she just kept pushing me, charge more, charge more, charge more. And I find that like, you know, I do free readings every week. I put them out on my Instagram for people, just like these energy updates. And I find that more than anything, when I put those out joyfully, right? Because the whole energy changes when we're doing something because we're passionate about it and it feels good. That changes my energy. I put it out and all of a sudden I've got people donating to me freely through PayPal because they're grateful, right? Because I'm grateful to be doing it. And it reminds me all over again of just that like beautiful wheel that starts spinning of like, they're always going to match the energy that I'm giving. Right. And I love that. And I love playing with that when I go to the grocery store. That's my favorite thing to do when I go out into the world is set the tone that I want to have for the whole day. Right. And see like just how much I don't want to say influence, but just how much magnetism that creates for other people who want to be part of that experience with you. And you can encounter someone who is in the worst mood and give them something very particular. And I'd say usually they'll turn right around all of a sudden. They feel the shift, right? And they want to match you in that. And they can't believe that someone's actually treating them a certain way. And they want to be part of that too. And I just think it's remarkable if we were just all a little bit more aware of just how much influence we could have. And like, you know, people are going out there so afraid to be out in the world. It's like fear is a deeply creative mechanism. Like fear will tell you incredible stories that your mind will want to run with. And all you really need to do is outcreate it. Just outcreate the fear. You have so much more going on up here and in your body. Like we have so many more authorities other than our mind that can jump in and all go, okay, what kind of day do we want to have? Because it truly is up to us. And now we get to put that out and see who else will rise to the occasion. It's amazing. But most people are like not really, they're afraid to live there, even though that's the space where like fear is the most like exciting and potent because you don't have to follow it. Um, I used to look at it as, in my mind, so I had like loads of marbles. I had to say blue marbles, red marbles, they were all mixed. And my job was to push aside the blue to the right until I was left with just red on the left. And that was me filtering out the negatives in my life. Oh, that. So I'm left with so I'm left with the positives. So it was like, okay, who is a negative person? What it was a negative object? Like what food is bad for me? What you know, what things don't I like? I, I go to bed after twelve I feel like shit. So I go to bed at eleven. And it was like creating my perfect life until there was nothing else to fix like it was all perfect i got rid of all the cancerous people I got the nice people in i'm going out for dinner every so often i'm sleeping great and waking up great until then when you get that you have to just maintain it otherwise you relapse um yeah <laughs> i just find that so interesting because i i spend so much time trying to talk people into doing that right but they want to hoard the toxic marbles so like, you know, in your opinion, what do you think that is? Like, why are people so attached to the toxic marbles? Like it's, and I'm telling them, you have to love yourself enough to choose, to choose, the, you know, the shiny, the shiny ones and the ones that make your life good, but they're so afraid to let go of the ones that are toxic. And it amazes me. Um, it's like it's feeling they are used to that feeling that is them that's their right. default feeling like right. you're having a cigarette after work your body's like hang on a sec something's not wrong you're not having a cigarette so you have a cigarette if you have a chinese on the weekend your boy brain's going to be set up all through the week for that chinese for the msg for the rush right mm. so that those thing objects each was a memory at that time from a friend from a grandparent from a school teacher whatever they right. are they create feelings unconsciously just knowing they're there like i cleared my parents whole loft because there was just objects from all this time that was just there and i binned it all right because i understood about the object attachment and um so when you're trying to pull them out, I guess I'm trying to say, unless people ask you for help, you're wasting your time helping them. Profit, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can make more money than if they want it because you are selling them to take co confinement in you. But then you, if you have a conscience, then you can't. So this person selling you this package, she might have got through this as like, let's say it was a, it was a hate thing. So you can either forgive people who got you to this state 
or you deep down hate the parents and the people you grew up with and then someone says look here's law of attraction power of the mind teach them out and you sort of despise these people unconsciously Mm -hmm. so you can charge this fucking ridiculous amount of shit and you have no guilt because you're still deep down hating so there's two ways forgiveness or getting back um so to your question um if people aren't ready to jump oh you can't make them (laughs) <laughs> people aren't ready to jump then they're gonna sink right so unless yeah. they're on the edge of fucking like i'm ready to jump catch me then you are pretty much wasting your time not completely because they might remember that you said something back then but they have to have a reason to get rid of all that stuff you literally have to go back to the age of one you can't just spin something that you have when you're 18 and 19 and 14 right if you've got stuff when you were five and you were six they've got to come first it's got to be in order you've got to go back in time zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I've just been a few and keep a few. No. Oh, that's my nan's vase. I'll keep that. Oh, but my my granny's shoe, I don't want that. You've got to fucking bin it all. Um, then these objects, the marbles, unless they're willing to get rid of them or they have no other choice, they simply won't because it's you saying this is a new life that they don't know exists unless they are wanting a way out and they're vulnerable, like, please right. fucking help me, then they might be willing to listen. But then they really have to take comfort in trusting you like trust me oh, been absolutely. all this stuff trust me i i did this with myself and my mom and my dad with four friends who i don't see anymore i did this to them and they felt like i knew their weaknesses their vulnerabilities they were exposed and they just stopped seeing me mm. it was really interesting because i did it because they were my greatest friends but by doing it i lost them because now they saw that i knew their hoarding habits their the problems that no one else knew and then they just fucked off and it, it was sad yeah, but, some people but, don't want to be seen but i realize now it's probably more for me than it was for them because i thoroughly enjoyed having a system right we're going to go th- unsubscribe all your emails we're going to stop all this post coming through we're going to go through your phone delete all these apps and all these phone numbers and all these facebook friends from fucking years ago that you met in a night out we're going to go under your bed bin all that shit order your clothes charity the clothes you don't use we're going to tidy your drawers up what's this coat hanger what's this fucking pin elastic bands how many forks do you need in the drawer how many shampoo bottles you need all these deodorant cans and then one by one it was me ticking off my own thoughts it wasn't actually them even though it was initially because i wanted to help them i got so much pleasure out of having a system and going through it that it was just me reliving what i did for me because of how great it made me feel but end of the day you're supposed to make you feel good before helping others so we both won yeah you know what i mean it wasn't Absolutely. a loss. I still benefit because I fucking loved yeah. <laughs> going through the marble system or filtering the marbles out. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it starts. I think it's a little. It can be for some people. It was for me a little painful at first because you're, you know, you're kind of ripping off band aids left and right for me. And I'm a very nostalgic, deeply feeling, sensitive person. So everything is feeling and memory for me, and I get attached to that. But so it was like ripping off band aids and having oh my God, like I see this person. Um, that they really like, I don't want them in my life anymore because of X, Y, and Z. They're not matching up to where I'm going. You have to push them out and that's a whole thing. And, but you know, it's, you were reminding me too of like, I used to work with addicts. I was a treatment consultant for a rehabilitation center. And, um, and I used to kind of have to tell them the same thing. I'm like, you know, every, the reason you're an addict is most likely because of something that happened between the ages of zero and 15, right? That's when we have all of the experiences that kind of dictate all the stories we tell ourselves for the rest of our lives. And if you're not willing to go back and take a cold, hard look at all of those stories and all of those feelings and all those patterns, then you're just not ready. I can't make you. I can't make you pick that up and look at it. If you're not willing, then we should not be on the phone right now. You know, (laughs) it's like, I understand that you want help, but like you'll only get help when you truly want help. And if you truly want help, you have to be willing to deconstruct your whole life, which yes, it's tough. It takes work, but is it worth it? Like beyond, you know, there's a reason that all of the mystics and philosophers that you see out there are like pretty happy and you wonder like what their secret is. Well, the secret is they did the work. They did the work. They were willing to go back and set everything down and only take what they wanted with them or maybe take none of it at all. And also, like, deconstruct all the feelings that go along with it. And that's what I teach in my course right now. I teach a six-week course on what I call emotional patterning, 
where I have everyone sit down and we look back and like, when is the very first time in my life that I remember feeling this emotion? What did my parents tell me this emotion was? What, like, how have I, how has it always manifested for me? And how can I look out for that moving forward? You know, how can I have a relationship with this thing where it is not me, but just something that moves through me and I can look at it from a conscious perspective rather than like, oh, like this is just who I am. Like everyone is so overly identified with the contents of their lives. It's just all stuff. It's just all stuff. And it can be tough to pe- push through some of us like myself who are very just nostalgic people. But that in itself too is probably something that I've just been telling myself since I was little, right? You're nostalgic. You're nostalgic. So therefore I am nostalgic, right? So it's just, it's always very interesting to try to see where people were at one, gauge their willingness to go back and put everything under a microscope. And two, also gauge like just how identified with the contents of your life are you? And then start to kind of maneuver them through that into letting everything go. But some people love to hold on like their life depends on it because they think it does. (laughs) You know how like a salesman will pick the person in the street to go up to because they fit their the dynamic yeah. or whatever they're trying to do it's no point going up to this person if you know he's got a car you want you're trying to sell a car to someone who's not got a car right so right. all this coaching and spiritual awareness stuff it's the same thing and what i mean by that is that if by 25 they haven't even began that journey they never will because that journey begins from when you leave school when everyone goes off to college and uni and you're like well it's just not for me and you don't fit in anywhere like you don't want a job because it's just shitty and boring and you are aware of feelings if you haven't began that journey by 25 statistically you're gonna be in that pattern forever or you are part of the pattern that didn't know any different Mm. just that group of people going out having you know parties and weddings waiting for your best friend to get married wanting to catch the bride thing and then you and then you have kids and then you go to the crash of them and then you have a breakdown and your husband cheats on you so you comfort them and then that becomes part of your (laughs) life that is your life just that cycle of i've got to go see fucking rebecca because she's depressed and that's that's part of your life um by 25 if you haven't started that journey you aren't that energy you are a weak energy dependent on other people you are the reason why people have all these problems right is because they were never part of that energy in the first place so they're trying Mm. to gain control of their life they're battling with their own conscious versus what everyone else is saying drugs problems ocd adhd asperger's whatever it's that cut off line everyone who's normal doesn't have these problems because they just follow and they don't think so it's just merging and then everyone's no one's going to crash but it's those people stuck in the middle that if you don't make it by 25 sadly sadly your energy isn't strong enough or weak enough to get you backwards or forwards and then it's up to the next generation aka your kids to Mm. try and complete the cycle of enlightenment like you have to learn from your parents so then the kid will have a choice to see what mum did or didn't do and then they might which which is enlightenment which you could say is the purpose of life you know yeah coming back until you you learn your shit but yeah yeah, you say if people didn't start that by the time of 25, what, what's your definition of like starting that just or doing the work in some capacity or just considering just it? Or like, what? Just thinking there is more to life and then keep asking and, and searching until you find all the answers rather than just going to the going to work because everyone else is going to work, getting a car in finance because everyone's got a car in finance, getting a mortgage. If you think that's life and you're not questioning there's more to life, why am I getting a mortgage? And you're just getting a mortgage because that's what you do. Okay. Your brain isn't set up to fucking, is there a God? What's he having for dinner up there? Like yeah. your brain's not even <laughs> thinking about that, thinking about bills, mortgage, work, boss, waking up, having, you know. Um, and again, because it starts from a very early age, if by 25 right. you've not even began that journey, then you were never on that path. You were just part of the, the sheep. You were white yes. sheep, part of the sheep. You were not a black sheep, different from the pack. And um, fortunately, yeah, the only way out for black sheep is to simply keep searching until you find that thing because going back to the white sheep is not you're not going to be happy and if in in 40 years time when you have what they call a midlife crisis which i believe is the shit you wanted to do growing up piercings tattoos and your parents said you're not having a tattoo some 50 year old man's like fuck you world i'm getting a tattoo of pinocchio on my leg 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're all the thoughts that you didn't do because you were told not to and you battle right. against being told. So you get ear piercings, tattoos, you go to Amsterdam and you fuck some t- lady boy, which you didn't do growing up because it was morally wrong. And then you right. lose your family and your marriage and shit like that. So mm-hmm. then it's like, OK, that thing might come back in time. But then you realize the foundation is set. So if you don't get enlightened by 25, life around you is your barbecues around your neighbor's house and all talking about the same stuff and school and mortgage and bank and the interest rates going up. And then the G like talking about God and fucking coronavirus doesn't exist and you won't fit in. So you'll be the black sheep again. So yeah. you've uh, find your black herd or sheep like we're black sheep, for example, mm-hmm. or you or you you keep going. There is no it's like if there's an iceberg sinking, you have to jump. You have to go, otherwise you will sink. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the optimist in me likes to believe that, you know, even if it's not there by 25, if they're meant to at some point, they will be jolted into it, right? Like my mom, well, that's a bad example because my mom has always been a very conscious person, but I think without realizing that she's conscious. Like she's just kind of always operated that way, but only now around uh, 62 she is, she's starting to really get more into mysticism and spirituality and ask more questions and deeper questions than she ever has. Because there are some things going on in her life that are causing her to uproot herself and everything's changing, right? But you're right, I think she probably was already in that space. But my dad, for example, I try to explain some of this stuff to my dad and he looks at me like he's got marbles for eyes. Like he just doesn't just get a mortgage and get a husband. and live exactly. happy Are you sure you don't want to work for the family company? You can make more money. <laughs> it's like, I, no, I don't want to sell paper. Well, I'll never, I'm, never be home. Cause I'm always at the office. No, thanks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, he just, he's been doing the same thing since he was 18 and he just retired a few weeks ago. And he's like, I've been looking forward to this since I was 18. And I'm like this, this is what you that like your whole life has been permeated by I can't wait to stop working. Like that sucks. I'm sorry for you. But he also like you're right, I don't think he ever really questioned the setup that he was given, right? Like he was told, like, yep, you go to work and you get married and you have kids and you have a mortgage and you have a retirement plan and his life revolves around having enough money in his retirement plan. Like, and it just makes me very sad. But you know, I wonder if at some point maybe he'll have some sort of experience that makes him question or is it is he just going to be lights off forever? I don't know. I like to believe that he'll have something that'll jolt him into questioning, but I guess I, some, I need to see it. <laughs> something like a near death experience is normally a reason for why they shit together because they realize, fuck, I could have died and I've done fuck all. I've worked for the same company 40 years, wanted to wait for retirement most people when they get to retirement their brain is dead from working for somebody else that right. they only really have say if you're lucky 20 years of actual life because you only have the weekend when you're f- for the last 40 years so five days a week's working for somebody else weekends for you you've only like spent like a minute part of your life for you so you suddenly think okay well if i get to retirement i've got must rest my life for me but then people don't realize that your brain's been working it's dead your body's dead right? right and then and then all this money in the bank that you're saving for you end up fucking dying you don't spend it or you get a disease and insurance and healthcare. so it's like right. i waited my whole life to pay for have all this money in the bank for retirement and then something happens and i can't even spend it and who wins the capitalist people the corporations which is why you said being happy with your coaching money even though you could have say millions that's not going to make you happy. You're part of the system. Yeah. Just because you've got more in the bank, you're, you're still part of the system. You can't spend a million, let alone fucking 300 grand. It's the same thing. Like you can't, how many massages are you going to get in a week? Like how many rounds of golf can you play? Exactly. And, then, and it is crazy. Like we have a postman. He literally has been the same postman since he was, it's like the only person I've, I've ever known probably had the same job since he was 18 and they literally worked their ass off slave their ass off for retirement and then sadly because they are so overworked they do get a disease and they die right and it's like holy shit all you wanted was retirement and you're gone it's like what yeah. a waste and that's for the company you were just just a fucking piece of paper like just another one in another mm-hmm. one out and it's like and it is scary but it reinforces that you literally have to do you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that stuff. And there's such a tension I've noticed that's created when people are 
actively ignoring what they actually want to do or who they really want to be, right? I feel like our energy is trying to tell us constantly, like, no, I need you to be over here. And they're like, no, this is the way I'm told things are supposed to be. And so they work their whole lives, right? And then they go into retirement. And like you said, I think most of them, from what we see, right, most people get sick and have to spend that retirement money on hospital bills or whatever else. And it's like, I I can't help but believe that the reason they get sick is because they've been denying themselves their entire lives. And that builds up a certain type of energy in the body and your cells respond to that. I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me. Like I, I've developed weird chronic pain stuff over the years that I've since healed with energy work. And I know that it's because of experiences that I had that I was holding on to and I was actively ignoring or not dealing with, right? It builds tension in the body. It's absolutely wild. And it, it affects our DNA. Like it just, I'm like touching the place. I used to have like chronic neck pain and I always touch it when I talk about it because I can feel it in there. Like that was not just something, I didn't get into an accident, right? I don't have any history in my life of like getting into an accident or having something happen to me. Like my chronic neck pain came out of nowhere and I knew through meditation after a while that it was because of trauma that I was just holding in that space. And I think working your whole life that way is traumatizing and that will get held in your body something once you're finally not doing the work anymore and it sucks so i have a quote too tight to give your family member 20 pound at christmas it you'd spend 10 grand on their grain today when they die right think Ooh. about it they save yeah. so much money they're so tight to extra 10 pounds in a christmas card like 10 pounds is going to get you anything anyway right in these days yet when they die oh you know, a food buffet, you know, fucking gravestone. I want the best gravestone for this person. I want big flowers, fucking hundred pound worth of flowers at the diner a week, right? I want a flying John from around the world. You know, it's like the last <laughs> meal. Let's have ribs and all that shit. And it's like, that, 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 um, that, that's such a powerful quote. Because when you understand it, is that we are waiting for this train that never arrives. And when it does arrive, it, it's not what we thought. And it's like, it's too late. All yeah. the trains that we miss because there'll be another one and then it doesn't turn up. And that's right. what life is like. People fear death because they are guilty about the fact they're not doing the stuff they want to do. And they're realizing time's up. Time is running out. And that voice mm -hmm. is giving you the nervousness of time's running out. What are you going to do? Tell that person you love them. Do something. And then they fear death. They're not fearing death. They're fearing that own voice in their head saying time is running out. Do it now. And that voice can disappear literally in a month if you just do every single thing you wanted to do that you've had in your head. Just yeah. literally, I wrote a piece of paper down. I wrote every single thought, everything I wanted to do, the person I wanted to see, every girl I wanted to say, let's go for a drink, just to tick it off if she was interested or not. Because my brain had to see that the outcome was either what I wanted or it wasn't. You have right. to like ask that person, are they interested? Otherwise, you'll be 50 years old. You'll be happily married. You'll bump into your school friend down the pub like in Power. You know Power? The no. Netflix thing. No, <laughs> whatever. He's got marriage and kids, and he bumps into somebody from high school, and then he ends up sleeping with her and loses his marriage and his fucking family Ooh. and the business because of yeah. he never said back in that time because in his head he's the same person. I liked you, and he goes back to that child, not realizing he's a fifty-year-old man now. So you have to like get every thought out of your head by simply mm. writing it down, doing it. Go to there, go there, go there, go there. It's like, am I gay? Two no. Suck a cock. Am I gay? No. Tick it off the list. Otherwise. <laughs> You're 50 years old and you've got a marriage and a mortgage and kids and it's that daddy's a homosexual. Don't judge. It's like yeah. daddy's not homosexual. Daddy didn't, didn't suck enough cock when he was 18. Right. Yeah. And he loses his family and his mortgage. And it's like thoughts are powerful because they will stay in your head until yeah. you get them out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's why whenever anyone invites me to do something, I, I'll usually say yes these days. And I used to be afraid all the time to say yes to anything for, you know, God, a million reasons. But now when I started saying yes to everything, no matter what it was, I feel so much more satisfied because I'm not running around thinking about like, oh, what, why did I say no? I would have said yes. It's like, I just, I just needed to do it and see it. Like I would rather have a whole life of doing and failing than not doing anything at all. Yeah. That would uh, drive me nuts. That, that's also similar to the quote of it's better to love and lose than not love at all. Exactly. It's better to experience something than not experience something at all. I want to I want to end this so there's more to talk about next time because we mm -hmm. have we are on a high right now. Um, so anything <laughs> you want to plug right now? Your coaching shit and Instagram. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, you can find me at Rose House Coaching, and I offer emotional and spiritual guidance and healing through a number of different ways. I use tarot. I use what's called sacred path readings. I teach courses. I teach workshops. So I like to offer people um, a lot of great choices for just expanding their consciousness in whatever way feels joyful to them. Right, I'm going to end it here, wait there. I'm just going to press stop.